Hi! In this video I wanna talk about Unity events and maybe start discussion about them. I will not show how or why you should use events. I assume that you're already familiar with Unity events and know their pros and cons. I just will show my path of searching a replacement for Unity events. I will show all the paths cause it was painful to not repeat my mistakes. There would be a lot of things going on. So feel free to speed up the projects or skip some parts. And also watch full video, because this story is happy end. Ok, let's go. First of all, a quick trip to the past, when we didn't have Unity events. In this time we have to hard code all logic in the scripts. So for example I want to enable some object and to disable another and call some methods on another component. Pretty, pretty common scenario. So I need to write custom script, I called it hard code, make a references and write a code that will do what I want. For one particular thing, yeah, maybe it's okay. But what if we have a lot of objects with different simple reactions to some game state changes, simply to say reaction to events? We have to create a lot of individual scripts, it will mess up project, only programmers can modify behavior and a lot of other bad things come up with this solution. So here come Unity events. Just look how it's easy to repeat previous example. So make a calls, choose the targets and Choose the method call. I want this to be enabled and I want to call play, for example, my name. Yeah, it's done. That's all. That's all what I need. And then I just need to call event.invoke. Pretty simple. Let's look what else we can do with unit events. I prepared some dummy scripts to show this. Here is target mode behavior script. This script I will use to indicate what type of methods we are allowed to call. Let's open it up. Here I wrote most common method signatures and classified them. Arguments, overloading, static, fields, properties, methods with return value. These prefixes I use to sort names in drop down menu when selecting method. Here I just repeat code from the script. And now we need something that will use our target, call his method. Here we have test unity event script. Um, just a simple class with only definitions of unit event, so no usage. Uh, event with no dynamic argument, event events with dynamic arguments. Notice the way of defining this kind of events. Without these wrappers, event wouldn't be visible in editor. So if I write like this, I will not see anything. Next goes list of events. I don't know why you need this, but we need to check if it works. Next goes unity event as a field of serializable class. This is a list of this class. So it may have sense for some kind of conditional events. Like if name of current scene equals to this, then do this. Let's make something, like if we're making the actual game. For example, after a certain event I want to play animation. Ok, just select animator, animator, play my anim. And maybe after animation we want to disable this object and, and to call some other method. Ok, so I continue developing the game and now, for some reason, I need this object to be disabled before event happen. 
So I just need to call set active on this object. Would it work? The answer is no. Play method would be ignored because object is disabled right now. So we need to enable object firstly and only after that call play. How we do this? Maybe change the order? Um, no, I can't. I just can't do this. So if I can change the order, I need to delete all the entries. Then enable object. Play. And also I need to call all other methods that was deleted. Oopsie, I forgot what was there. Do you see problem in this situation? Definitely yes. This limitation breaks all usability of Unity events. Next thing, I want to set bool variable in animator. Can I do this? Um, set trigger, send, stop, where is, where is set bool, where is set int, float. So can I do this? No. Unity events can't work with multiple arguments. Let's switch to debug mode and look what is unit event in a nutshell. Straightforward things. Array of calls. Target. Target method name. Arguments. Um, wait. Arguments with S on the end. So maybe it's supposed to work with multiple arguments. But for some reason does not. I didn't get it for real. Why Unity decided to do like this? Can someone explain me, please? Here starts my story. I was tired of Unity events. So I wanted to find solution similar to Unity event. Google said nothing good about this. So I started searching in Asset Store. First thing that I found was Event Delegate System. Free asset made by community. That as me. Looking for Unity event replacement. It has 5 stars on Asset Store. Good reviews. So I thought I found the ideal solution with first try and imported this tool in my project right away. Here is test even delegate system script. Let's look. It's just rewritten Unity events example, but now using event delegate system. First of all, it doesn't support dynamic argument events. And we have to use some strange class called reordable event list. Let's look at how we have to use it in the code. There is no invoke method. We must iterate through all event entries and execute them separately. Really strange way to do things. So why people like this tool so much? Maybe it provides a super cool mega advanced editor? Actually, yes. Here we have reordable list. Complex and multiple arguments like vector3, color. It works with fields, with functions, with static methods and all other things. <clears throat> you can choose the way you will provide value of argument as value that you have to specify in editor or as reference to another value. This might be very handy. So it's like dynamic event arguments but a lot cooler. Okay, now I understand why people like this. But I do not believe in miracles. So let's look deeper. Go to debug mode and look at how even delegate system stores information. Very similar to Unity events, but now we have a list of arguments called parameters. And each argument consume um, 80 bytes. In compare, Unity event argument consume only 20 bytes. Okay, go further. 
it doesn't work with overloading. I can select method with custom class that I created and I need to specify unity object. Weird flex, but okay. Maybe I need to pass value like before as reference. No, that also doesn't work. Also, I can't use scriptable object as target. Pathetic. Let's look at list of events. Um, weird. Oh. So when I modify one, it also affects all other entries. Same behavior here. Also, this plugin super laggy in editor. Very bad. I even tried to edit scripts of this asset to make it work. But there is so many work to do. It's easier to make my own solution from scratch. Then I found just another event system shortly about this. I didn't buy it, but contacted the developer. He immediately warned me that his plugin do not work on AOT platforms, so no iOS development. Not big deal for me, but anyway. It is 20 bucks by the way. Also, I was looking at multi-event asset, but it has some limitation and looks outdated. Okay, next tool. Events Plus. It cost 3 bucks, I bought it, it works. It can make all what I expect from such system. But it has weird class and method naming. Maybe developer is big fan of C++, I don't know. Also, I have to do extra work to make events work. I must call initialize method for each event in the class. Not a big deal, but it may cause bugs. Editor is not the best one. Here we have some strange UI solutions in how to select target object. I can select target after I specified it, and I can track target game object like in Unity events. This plugin works with some publisher subscriber pattern or what. I watched a developer's tutorial video three times and didn't get it, and I don't need it, so whatever. The list of methods that I can call is huge. It's hard to find what I'm looking for. Maybe some structuring might be handy. What about list of events? It doesn't work. Same with serializable class fields. That causes errors in console. Good enough tool, but has some disadvantages. I even started to implement this plugin in my own project. Started to change source code of this asset to make editor look better and all other stuff. <clears throat> Alright, now we came to the most useful part of this video. Finally. So. No tools that I tested didn't fully fit my needs. To be fair, I just gave up. But then, somehow, I found alt events. God bless developer of this masterpiece. I think I still didn't find all the features of this tool. It's almost visual scripting. So again, it can do all I want. Reordable list. Complex and multiple arguments. Comfortable UI similar to Unity events. Structured method selecting. So I can see that this is properties, this is methods, this is base class methods. Also, you can customize this drop down. You can see that there is no arguments name. Maybe it's because I used Unity 2018. Package goes with DLL, but source code also included. Let's look inside. Go to debug mode. It looks almost the same, except that developer use really smart way to store parameters values. These four float variables could store vector2, vector3, vector4, quaternion, color. Single float also stores there. Also, there is very interesting way to work with dynamic arguments. Here we have dynamic event with vector3 argument. We can call whatever method we want. But if this method contains vector3 argument, then we can pass the dynamic value to this argument, like this. Also, 
you can use static methods from system or other libraries. Pretty impressive. Just imagine what else you can do with this system. Even more, you can get dynamic value from function and then use this value as argument. In this example, I grab some get vector3 value and set position to this value. So, that's it. Use alt events and be happy. As you can see, I have nothing to do with YouTube. I just want to share with everyone this amazing tool. And maybe whine to you a little bit. Thank you for watching. I really want to know other opinions. So, leave a comment. Goodbye.